Hello, Thomas. Thank you so much for the time today. Cheers, Andrew. Yeah, no, it's it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So how would you describe him? Uh, this series has such a great style. I love the fact that it's somewhere we don't get to see on TV very often. Uh, but how would you describe him in, in this kind of mad world that they're in? Yeah, he's a well, he's a pilot. First of all, he's he's a he's a pilot captain, which means he's the guy that makes the calls when, you know, push comes to shove. Uh, so he's he fancies himself, I think, a bit of a leader and, and he likes to be a guardian. He's maybe a little uh, he can be a bit rough on the edges and he likes to pick fights. I think I think he's got a very uh, I don't know what the 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 maturity rating is on this interview is but he's got a very low tolerance for bullshit uh especially when it comes to the job uh because it's a it's a high stakes uh world that these characters are in that this tv show is set in it's it's a it's a medical emergency drama but you know up in the sky traveling at twenty thousand feet and uh you know riding atvs and snowmobiles it was that it was such an adventure to, to to make this show so if we we captured that at all in the filming you know i'll I'll be pretty happy. I'll consider that a win. Um, but Novak is, uh, um, yeah, he's a guy with a lot of armor. That's how I describe him. He's got a lot of armor. Um, I think he's developed that over, you know, the course of having to be very much uh, a survivor. Uh, I mean, you don't make it to northern Canada, you know, living in an outpost in a, in a frat house slash barracks with a bunch of other training nurses and pilots without you know, having a reason, I think, or at least maybe something to run away from. So there's a lot of there's a lot of big, big journeys that these characters go on in this series. And I think it's one of the reasons why people are really going to connect with it. And you know, they've, they've all got enormous dreams that they're trying to pursue. And, you know, they're they're dealing with some incredibly, uh, you know, formative life decisions that they have to go through along the way. Like no one's got an easy ride or an easy time through this this story. Um, but, you know, you get to see how people gel and don't gel and, you know, punch it out or hug it out, whatever it is. It's, you know, it's, it's a bit, it's, a, it's, you know, it's set in the wilderness, really, for the most part, or as close to the, you know, remote wilderness as we have in, in, in Canada and North America. So uh, it's, I'm glad you said that. I think it is a cool setting, you know, for the film. It's one that's not uh, terribly explored, like in the media and in, in, in film and television. But, you know, I think one of our directors, Ron Murphy, said it really best he was also an ep on the show so he kind of got the bigger picture of things and he said you know there, there's not a lot of um unexplored spots on the map anymore you know we've all we've kind of got it covered like but if we can give people a taste of you know yeah like adventure you know like kind of undiscovered you know more, more of a more of a savage uh and and it's tough like you you can imagine like i mean just we were filming in Win winnipeg manitoba which is sort of like this the far eastern edge of the great Canadian prairies and um, you know even just being you know relatively down south like it was just so bitterly cold in the winter like it, it it's it was it was the coldest I'd ever actually experienced in my life and and it, you know it's so cold that that cars fail you know and, and camera equipment stops working it, it was uh, you know and these are just the conditions that these people choose to live in you know for for you know months at a time uh you know sometimes without ever going back to the city or anything like that and you know just to get a taste of that during the filming process was really cool it was like our own little mini revenant you know what i mean we weren't quite like jumping in frozen rivers or stuffing ourselves into animal carcasses but you know you never know season two season three <laughs> um yeah yeah things to aspire to in the future seasons yeah, exactly least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was I was really excited because I got to do all this plane stuff. You know, Novax, he's a he's 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 a pilot, so they're basically in they're essentially there to support the uh, first responders, uh, the, the 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 paramedics. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're on hand basically to help with whatever kind of medical procedures need to be done, or carrying people out, or just you know, they're, they're as much involved in the, the thing as they are responsible for just getting people there and back safely. So it was super cool. It was such a hands-on show. I'd never worked on a medical drama before, um, but man, like, yeah, the, the plane stuff was incredible for me. It touched on my inner geek of wanting to be in a sci-fi show and, you know, you know, fly an X-wing. And uh, it was the closest I've come to that. And the, and the, the set that they built in, in studio was 
as close it, it was it was basically a replica of what you'd be looking at in inside the cockpit of a plane so it was so cool to learn you know the mechanics of it and also just what what a pilot does you know like the behavior of him where his attention is focused what are the high stress situations and and there's some super high stress situations in this show it's it's uh like it it, it it is like a remote place and it's, it's a wild place and it, you know, a lot can go wrong out there, but it's also a medical drama. So, you know, it's going to be basically some of the more extreme cases that you'd ever find out there, you know, in terms of, you know, well, and to me, the thing, the context that I think a lot of people need to think about or go in with or something is that, you know, in Toronto or wherever you are in the country, you know, an ambulance comes and picks you up and takes yeah, you to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. But in some of these places, the hospital is hundreds of miles away. Yeah. And so this plane is the life connection basically for these people to survive. So it's, yeah. it's remarkable to think of the team that it takes in real life. And even in the story to make that possible to save lives, basically. Absolutely. Uh, uh, some of the consultants that we had uh, on deck to help us out with the flight, you know, the, the knowledge of the plane and, and the pilot's behavior and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they were connected personally to the writing team and, and the mm -hmm. showrunner. So it, it was a really personal story that we were telling with a lot of these characters. And um, that made it really special because they were really they were there as often as they could be taking time off their own jobs. You know, they they were the examples of our characters making it. You know what I mean? They're now full time nurses and full time pilots at Air Canada. And, you know, it was cool to, to have a take, you know, them to share their real life experiences with us and, and also to portray these characters, because um, they're all really heroes. And that's what I love about this story is, there's a lot of main characters, you know, we've got, you know, you know, Ace, uh, Ace is Bodhi, who's pretty much our leading man, and he does such a fantastic job, him and I, you know, really developed a pretty special bond while working on this project and, and challenged each other. And, uh, it was fun. We're kind of rivals in the show too, which I, I look forward to seeing how that played out. Cause we were actually quite good friends. Uh, we became quite good friends during the, the production and uh, it was quite hard to be mean to him a lot of the time when it was time to, you know, time to go, but yeah, he, he was great. And yeah, this, I, I really like how it's sort of made every single person on that show you know, as much as of a hero as, you know, as, as, as Natasha and Ace's character as our leading man, leading lady. It's, it, yeah, it's great. It's great. Well, I read at one point that you described him as Novak, as the lovable teddy bear in a stern Polish blanket. And I love the description. So I'm curious what it takes to break his pool. What, what, what's the thing that, oh, that man. you know. Well, that's a cool that. one. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think a lot about, um, he's from, uh, and he's from an immigrant family. Um, yeah, that he's he's you know his family's Polish, and he is also you know he doesn't really have their support or their approval, you know, like I have in my life. You know, I'm I'm very fortunate that my parents, you know, sort of they I just had to promise that I would never be an architect. That was the only sort of control they've ever really exerted over my my you know what I did with my life and I've just sort of stumbled into acting like this but usually the, um, the warning is no acting either so that's impressive <laughs> uh, sorry what was that usually the the warning is no acting either so it's impressive that they uh, that was the warning no architect <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um but uh you know Novak I think is fiercely fiercely independent um he fancies himself a bit of a, a you know a bit of a mr badass kind of you know captain cool you know i call the shots i call the play i know what's best in this situation if you don't like it get out or just fall in line because i'm in charge the problem however with novak is that he doesn't always know the right call and he doesn't always have you know, he can, his, his own personal opinions about things are very, very rigid, I'd say. He has a very serious, like very, um, you know, a very stern moral compass. Uh, he has a very clear idea of what's wrong and what's right and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And, you know, that you should never let your personal life bleed into the job, even though, you know, hypocritically, he is constantly allowing his personal judgments about the rest of the team to, you know, dictate his decisions and and he's he's a hugely emotional guy i think he's very protective of the people that he loves and 
I think he is really desperately trying to find an identity or a place where he can feel like he belongs and he serves some purpose and he's useful, you know, and he's a bit prickly and, you know, but I think really deep down, he has a desperate, desperate need to be needed by something or someone or be wanted, you know, for who he is. Um, so it was a cool character to play because it, it was sort of reminiscent of the character I played on The Order because um, he was also, I, I saw him very much as like a guardian in terms of how he served the, 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 the group dynamic and also the story. Um, and he was also sort of dark and brooding and but really was a bit of a softy when once you figured out, you know, what what his carrot was, you know, and a lot of the time it's just love, you know, with all these characters there. They're, and it's just like us, you know, we're we're looking for love, you know, and and we've got big dreams and it's scary to sort of chase those things. You know, uh, there's a lot of really cool stories that I'm looking forward to, you know, to people experiencing, not just my own. But what's nice about having like, you know, you know eight or nine main characters is there's there's just so much room for everyone's highs and lows so there's always you know even though there's going to be a lot of heavy stuff that we go through I think in this show it deals with some pretty serious subject matter and I think we've tried our best to treat that with respect um, in terms of just the different stories and voices that we're, we're, we're you know showing here and um yeah yeah it's uh <laughs> Yeah, it's been a, it's been a great experience, yeah, and I'm I'm really thrilled for people to get get a taste of it soon. July 10th, Paramount Plus, and uh, yes. tomorrow on uh, CBC. So, but. well, I've I've seen the first few episodes, and I know that uh, speaking of love, that things lead towards something with Tristan. But now, yeah. I know you can't speak a lot about what's going to sure, happen. Sure, sure. But I'd love to hear if you can tease a little bit about what that is going to be like, because obviously it's a uh, it's a big question on his mind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, I think, well, I, I don't think, uh, you know, Keon, my, my, my fellow actor did some really amazing, beautiful work. Uh, and, you know, we developed a lot of really good respect and trust. And it was my first time really doing any, you know, intimate scenes. I mean, I'd had some experience. I, I had some stuff on Motherland and a bit of stuff on The Order, but this was like, this was more of a sexy show than I'd ever been a part of, you know, it's like, a medical... I was going to ask you about that. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's, you know, life and death basically, you know, it, it's, it's, and very much from what I've heard of it, you know, you know, in the college days, obviously in, in British Columbia up here that, you know, tree planting was a thing that a lot of people talk about as like a way to, you know, make some money, good summer gig, but it's very similar. I imagine to what the experience would be like living in these remote outposts like these pilots and these nurses do it's very much just sort of you know whoever sort of looks good that evening because it's been a hellish day you almost got eaten by a bear you've planted like 300 trees maybe made 35 dollars and you know you got to pay for gas and food and then you just you know it's a sort of a more like wild um work environment than a lot of us are sort of so uh, accustomed to so there's going to be a lot of you know there's going to be a lot of love triangles. There's going to be a lot of hot firemen and, you know, fire women and people coming on, you know, that is, Oh, it's, Oh, we got some fresh meat on the base. And that was sort of what attracted me about this project in the first place was the sort of hybrid uh, we're kind of all in like a army, you know, we're almost sort of all on deployment together, you know, in sort of like a, a different bit of a dangerous environment, but, you know we're there for sort of you know humanitarian purposes we're not there to you know gun anybody down but it's very much sort of the same kind of feeling almost as when you're on a film set too it's like you're living on a different planet for you know three four five months at a time and the people around you they become as much your family as they become your uh, your you know uh, co-workers so yeah without t without spoiling too much there's it's a kissy show and and there's going to be a lot of romance but it's i think it's going to also be I mean, it's cool. There's there's going to be a lot of you know life and life and death and close calls and you know you know there's there's as much uh, tragedy as there is joy in this. So I think the people really are looking for more than anything up there is either a release or not to have a release. You know, someone's either trying to cry or not cry or scream or just hold it all in 
and we get to see them, you know, we get to see it when the cup runs over for these people, you know, Novak in general, he likes to push himself beyond what, you know, some of his physical, maybe mental capabilities are, you know, and he doesn't like to ask for help. And that can be a really dangerous thing, you know, when you're dealing with people's lives and, you know, yeah. So, oh man, I'm very excited. So I'm glad you saw the first episode. It's, it's cool to hear and makes me very excited to, to, to watch it as well. Well, I've just got two quick questions left. So one is, you know, when you're up there doing this, what kind of things did you do when you weren't filming? Were you getting out to kind of explore or jump sure. on yeah, I mean, or CDs or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we did, uh, we had a, you know, we had, we had a night of fun uh, where we all dressed up together as a, as a cast, uh, you know, but we, we had uh, a couple of the others, not of the main, main cast with us. We all dressed up as a, as a masquerade ball and went out for Halloween. But for the most part, like, I credit those all, all everyone on my team all the cast like they were every single day that we weren't filming we were in the gym busting our butts like an hour at a time i'm a huge like kickboxing uh tie boxing freak so believe it or not winnipeg had some fantastic uh just straight straight muay thai gyms mm -hmm. so on days when i wasn't filming you know i'd go to the gym and you know just be put through an absolute grinder by you know a guy who you know is I, I really idolize these days, honestly, fighters more than I idolize actors. I, I've, I've, from what I've learned and experienced and gained from martial arts, I see that and I see acting as so much more of a craft now than I see it as like an artistic thing. Like artistry is involved, I think, in acting, but only once you've really mastered the technical forms of, of it, very similar to martial arts, you know, in a, in a sense, you know, it's, it's more about the hours that you put in in the gym than it is, you know, when it's time to do the big fight like that's all fun and it's fun to film a tv show it's kind of like going on holiday in a weird way you know you're in a new place there's always coffee around you know your accommodations and your travel everything your routine is all kind of there for you so you just need to basically just show up you know every day and do the job but yeah for me at least it was just such a healthy experience because we were all really like holding ourselves accountable for this project and a lot of the actors and myself are sort of, you know, we're Canadian actors. We're not that well known in the broader, broader scope of things. And, and you know, to get the chance to really uh, share some Canadian stories and, you know, the landscape and just, I thought, you know, it, it was such an incredible experience and such a privilege to, to be on this project for me. But uh, yeah, man. Oh, it was good. I just loved getting my butt kicked every day in the gym. It was fantastic. The only thing is you can't show up with a broken nose or bruises on your face because makeup will kick your butt as well. So, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's been great. And I credit martial arts a lot to, I think, my recent jobs and my recent successes in the industry. It's been an incredibly powerful, positive force in my life. So, you know, Winnipeg and uh, I'm going to give it a shout. Dave's Nakmoy Gym, Winnipeg, uh, which is now Dave's. Uh, uh, Dave's combat arts, I believe. So shout out to you, uh, Master Dave. Uh, he whooped my butt hard for about a half hour. The first day I came in, I phoned the dojo. I said, hey, I'm here for a job. You know, I'm, I'm a kickboxing freak. I'm from the West Coast. And, you know, I, I'm looking for just a straight Thai boxing gym. And he came in and we threw the gloves on. We hit some pads. And, and man, he, he tossed me around that dojo for, for four or five rounds. It was such an incredible experience. And yeah, so that 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 was such a great. It was a gift, you know, to be able to work on a, a job as cool as SkyMed, and also, you know, keep up with my own passion and training for for martial arts. And and then honestly, one of my one of the coolest things. This is a bit of a spoiler, but you know, Ace Ace, uh, who plays Bodhi, you know, our our main lead man, and I, we we would you know oftentimes be in the gym doing drills and hitting pads and doing a bit of light sparring because he's a, he he has a dance background and and a Taekwondo background, so his movement and his balance and his timing were incredible. And I think some of the people from the production may have seen that and, you know, may have arranged a fight for us in the show. So there's a really, really cool action sequence because we are rivals and, you know, at a certain point, you know, it's in the middle of nowhere, the car is broken, you know, or whatever the, whatever the thing is, you know, you're at your wits end with the person. And so sometimes you just need to slug it out and, you know, be surprised that <laughs> I'm not encouraging violence at all, but, but uh, you know, sometimes it can do wonders for a bit of a cathartic uh, moment. So there's going to be a lot of fun to look forward to. Well, the last thing we're going to ask you is I saw your bio uh, for the show and in it, you said you like to sing sea shanties. 
Oh, is there, yeah, man. is there a story there? Is that for real? I th- there's no story really, but I was in college and we were doing a production and one of my uh, classmates that year, a guy I really looked up to, introduced me to Stan Rogers, who if you haven't heard Stan Rogers, of course. he's yeah, he's one of the greatest Canadian balladers of all time. I personally think that Northwest Passage should just be the Canadian anthem, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, so, you know, it's not, he does have some shanties, you know, the, the well, Northwest Passage and uh, oh my God, the uh, one, the one where he sings about going down to old Maui, that one's just a, that was great. And I just came off a project with a lot of boats and a lot of water. So there, I'm not going to lie, there were some sea shanties involved, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's become a thing nowadays, but I don't want to say I was into it before it was cool, but I definitely <laughs> liked Stan Rogers for many years. And, and when I, you know, when I'm alone, I will just, I'll just blast out a couple ballads. It feels good. You know, it's fun. And yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Is this something you've done on TikTok? I haven't followed you on TikTok. Oh, I'm so not, a, I'm, I'm not a TikToker, man. No, you're In not fact, a TikToker. Like, <laughs> no, I, I mean, to my, you know, obviously it's, it's a, you know, it's a very powerful platform. You know, it's a very influential platform. There's a lot of people that see that and stuff, but. I've yet to make my mark, you know, who knows, perhaps one day. Hold our fingers for some sea shanties. Yeah, yeah, you know what, that's not a bad start. (laughs) Cheers, Andrew. Thank you so much for the time, I really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime, yeah, I hope to do it again. Thank you. Thank you.